Today on Hands On Photography, I am joined by another amazing photographer, Mr. Alan Hess. And boy, he's going to drop some knowledge on y'all today. Whew. Stay tuned. This is Twit. Hey, what's going on, everybody? I am Ant Pruitt, and this is Hands On Photography here on Twit TV. Hope y'all are doing well. I'm unbelievable as always. This is the podcast where I like to sit down or in this case, stand up at the desk and share with you different tips and tricks that are going to help make you a better photographer as well as a better post processor. Because, yes, those two things do go hand in hand. Don't listen to what everybody else is saying about that. Anyway, if this is your first time joining the show, I want to say welcome to you and thank you for joining me here on the show. Now, do me a favor. In whatever podcast application you're using, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, even YouTube, go ahead and hit subscribe and go ahead and leave me a nice star rating and a comment and all of that good stuff, all of that magical algorithmic stuff to help push us up in the ratings and get more people um, watching and checking out the show each and every week. You can find all of our subscription options on the website at twit.tv slash hop. That's twit.tv slash H-O-P for hands-on photography. All right. So I appreciate y'all helping me out there and, and helping to grow the audience and appreciate all of your continued support. So now let's go ahead and get started with this week's show. So I've been doing a little bit of a photographer's tips series, if you will, and reaching out to some of my beloved photographer friends that I just absolutely adore. I've been looking up to their work and I'm always jealous of them, especially jealous of some of the access that they get to the behind the scenes stuff. But, you know, I'm not going to throw too much shade at, I guess. Today. <laughs> That's OK. Uh, but, yeah, I want to introduce today's guest, the magical, awesome Mr. Alan Hess. How you doing, brother? I'm good, man. It's, <laughs> it's good to be here. Sorry, I'm um, not going to throw too much shade at you. I know I give you a sorry. whole lot of grief with <laughs> being able to go to the magical world of Comic-Con or being able to get to see all of these amazing musicians on the stage and backstage and touring and all of that. So, no, I'm not jealous at all. <laughs> not, not one bit. <laughs> well, it, it's been a slow year. <laughs> <laughs> uh, haven't had uh haven't had too much access since uh COVID hit and i'm looking forward to to getting back to work oh by the looks of it i'm gonna say 2022 oh, um man, hope, man. yeah you know and, and see that that makes me wonder about guys like you and and, and our mutual friend mr steve brazo who's been on here before yeah uh, like what what are your plans you know to sort of help bridge the gap between not doing the conventions and not doing the the concerts you know so what else have you been working on and the, the, the first thing is that you know um i'm waiting anxiously for the vaccine to roll out uh yep. and, you know so everyone can get it i'm i'm in my f early 50s but uh, i'm a diabetic so i'm hoping that sooner than later um i'll be able to have that shot in my arm and i'm looking forward to that and i think once we get a good um roll out in, you know, later on this year, I think we will start getting back to having events and smaller conferences and smaller shows. And I think by 2022, we'll be growing back to where we were. One of the things I've been doing is, um, there's two things I've done really in this, in this time. I've still been working a little on some books and some book projects as an editor. The other thing is I've been- How many been, books do you have out, dude? You, you've already written a gazillion books and you're still I, writing books? Well, I, I've written, yeah, I've written 16 um, un, under my name and I've been an editor on a whole bunch of others. Um, wow. And the, the latest one that I was uh, working as a content editor. So basically uh, the author had a bunch of information, but I helped kind of put it all together it was on a, an Olympus, um, the OME 1 Mark three. It yeah. came out, came out in March, a really cool little compact, you know, three, four, four thirds camera. Four thirds and yeah. Micro four thirds. Um, I think the book will be out in about March. It's done. It's finished. <laughs> it's a big three. It, and yeah, the last couple of books in those cameras is three, 400 pages. Um, oh. and it, it's kind of what led me to, to wanting to have a tip today for photographers about knowing their gear. And I don't mean like understanding what the buttons, but like really knowing your gear because that camera has like 400 menus. 
And every mm. menu has like 400 subsections. And, Unless and, it's Sony, then it has 600 menus. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, some of these, <laughs> well, I've, I've done two books on Sony too. Sony's not going to like me after that. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's true. Sometimes I think those cameras, you know, they, they suffer a little bit of the, um, we can do it. So we'll do it as opposed to what should we do and what shouldn't we do? You know, it's, it's kind of interesting. I've been learning how, you know, some of the settings I don't use all the time. I've been playing around with those a little bit and there's no better time to experiment. And then, you know, when you can't go out and create new stuff at, in my field, you know, a lot of photographs of the dogs, <laughs> there was a hawk <laughs> living in my backyard for a while. So, you know, every night I'd kind of have the camera ready just in case I saw the hawk land on this little tree coming up from the neighbor's yard and photographed that a bunch of times. Um, Recon and prep. You know, yeah. Well, you know, that's the, that's the thing is, um, what I shoot a lot is I shoot a lot of concerts for people who don't know what you're talking about access. I'm the house photographer at what is now known as the Pachanga arena, San Diego. It used to be called the San Diego sports arena. It's been there for 50 something years. It's the big oval building. Mm -hmm. Um, we've, you know, and I'm, I'm the house photographer. I've been doing that for a decade now. So that's 50 to three, four shows a year for 10 years, Ooh. you know, plus all the backstage stuff, plus all their construction stuff, plus all the, you know, Hey, we repaved the parking lot. Can you go on the roof and take a photograph of the parking lot? You know, <laughs> every I, little project, every, you know? Yeah. So it's like literally every time we change the scoreboard or we, you know, put in new ice or we put a new basketball floor in or any of the stuff that was going in, I shot that as well. But the fun part is the concerts. Yeah. And um, so years ago, and I'm going to kind of lead into what I want people to get out of this because it's kind of, it sounds really simple, but it's, it's not. <laughs> it's, right. Right. It, it's important. It's more important than you think it is. And uh, many years ago when I started there, uh, and it was after about a year, they came to me and they were like, okay, we've got an I honestly don't remember who the first one was, but it was like, we're going to do a trade shop before the show. And I okay. went, I don't know what that is. And they're like, oh yeah, it's really simple. We do this custom poster for every event we have at the venue. And we're going to have the, um, the people who run the venue plus the musical artists. And they're going to, we're going to give them a poster and they'll sign it. And then you'll take a picture of them holding the poster with the general manager. And, the, oh. and, and, and I'm like, Oh yeah, that sounds really cool and easy. And then they're like, yeah, you're going to have about three seconds. Uh, no. What? <laughs> <laughs> and, and like, that's, that's all you get. So I'm like, wait, I have three seconds to take a portrait of some famous person with my boss. Oh, I'm, I'm like the pressure becomes, you know, the pressure is insane and it's usually a flash on camera trying to bounce it off of something or have a diffusion dome on it or, but I don't get a practice shot. I'm literally walking into whatever backstage room they decide to do it in. Um, I usually get to, we usually do it at the end of whatever meet and greet or other thing is going on. So I get to kind of see what's going on and then I get to adjust my camera. I get to take a frame. I may get to adjust the settings and take another frame or two, but mm. then that's, then that's it. And then they come to me and they go, yeah, we really want that shot, you know, because that's whoever it happens to be with, you know, my boss. And, um, so that gets the stress, uh, even talking about, <laughs> yeah, doing I, it, even I talking about imagine it. Imagine because I, heck, just shooting in your, in your, dining room or your living room in your home the light changes so fast uh and you got to notice that light is changing now you're talking about a a big old arena and some some back room or what have you that's not the same it's not going to have the same kind of light in there it's probably going to have less light it's probably going to have mismatch mismatch light uh it's it's a it's, it's a tough one so <laughs> So I've been very, very fortunate over the years. I've done some teaching at Kelby One, um, and I've met some other photographers. Uh, one of them is Joe McNally, who's oh, he's regarded great. as yeah one of. And I've actually been lucky enough to be on set um, as an assistant to Joe when he was doing some shooting in San Diego. Oh and, man, name dropper. And, yeah, well, but, <laughs> but it's important because when you're going to look at someone and how to emulate someone, look at the best. Right. That's, yeah. you know, and, and he watching him work was an amazing thing. But the one thing I noticed was that Joe never looked at his camera. 
He never had to look at a button. He never had to look at a setting. He never like took his glasses up and, and you know, started right. trying to figure out what was going on in the camera. Right. Joe talked to someone then he picked up his camera. He took the picture and he looked at it really quickly. And then he made an adjustment without ever looking at the camera. And yeah. I was like, he knows his camera so well. And he knows what every button and everything is doing. And he has it set up exactly how he wants it right mm -hmm. at the start. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I got to do that. I got to learn how to use my camera without ever actually looking at what the buttons are. And it seemed really daunting at the time because there's so many buttons and menu choices and stuff on the back of cameras. And after a while, it came, I came down to, well, actually, there's only ISO aperture and shutter speed that's it and those three technically i don't even have to worry about the iso or the aperture uh-huh all i really have to worry about is the shutter speed because i'm gonna have that flash on the camera i'm gonna set the aperture to make sure it's got enough depth of field to have everyone in focus yeah i'm gonna iso i'm gonna put it at 1600 because the camera can handle it so now all i got to do is worry about ambient light and suddenly all those other things are like oh the relief. I got one <laughs> dial to deal with. And now that I know that I only have one dial to deal with, all I have to do is keep it under my thumb, literally. So um, on my cameras, I keep the shutter speed tied to the back control knob. Okay. And I can hear it click. Yeah. Every time I click, I know it's making one setting. So if I'm sitting there and I'm like, okay, I don't have to look and go, Oh, what am I at? 400th of a second. Now I'm at 250. I can literally just go because I always keep my camera set at 250th of a second at F 2.8 at 1600 ISO. That's literally how they come out of the bag every mm -hmm. single time mm -hmm. that if I'm sitting and looking at my camera and I've got it at 250 the second and I need to adjust the shutter speed, one click is 320th. Right. Two clicks of 400. I right. just, that's now in my head. So I don't have to sit there and do it. So I'm going to go through a couple of pictures just so you get an idea of how quick these are like all the frames that were taken at these times mm -hmm. and people get a little bit of an idea. So, um, <laughs> so this is a band called Mana. This, um, might've been one of the first trade shots I did. This was in 2014. They all got together. The poster came down. I got one frame <laughs> and then they, <laughs> they broke apart and started talking. I managed to grab this frame and, uh, was like, all right, um, great. We're, we're done. See, I'm looking um, at this frame and I'm thinking, all right, they have one overhead light right there. There's no <laughs> fill. Um, what am I going to do here? Did, is that how, how you approach it? Yeah. You walk. I, in I, I look at that and all I did was I'm, I'm like, I'm going to, I'm going to aim, um, and it's the same for this one as well. This is um, the band Rush, or at mm -hmm. least two of the members. So all I'm doing right here is I'm aiming a speed light at 45 degrees over the 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 head of the um, of my boss, the guy in the middle, with a diffusion dome on it, and I am powering at it about half power. Oh man, and blasting it. <laughs> I'm, I'm, because everything around that, there's no ceiling. We're in the back of an arena. There's, it's literally not going to hit anything and bounce back down. Right. So I want the light I'm getting about bleeding down to make it look like the light's coming from above. I'm just using, um, this light that's coming directly out of the flash. Wow. And the idea here is that I can sit and do this test shot at home all day long. I can, stand outside i can do it i can do it inside i can know what's going on but until i actually take the first shot i don't really know what's going to happen um i have a really good idea right but i'm not i'm not 100 percent sure so on these i'm usually going to sit at about f56 um i'm going to go at like one one twenty fifth of a second and i'm going to have that flash aiming above and over and now obviously the settings make no difference because if someone else was taking a shot in a different building it might be completely different right but uh, there's still the same concepts of the, at yeah. least what i'm getting out of this is you you took the time to practice this type of scenario at home if you had to you, so yeah. you sort of knew what you were getting into from time to time because it, it could be such a short notice and uh well, the, 
there is no notice. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> uh, it, it's really one of those things where a lot of times um, we show up and we get told, uh, I'll be told the opening band goes on at eight o'clock. We need you at eight oh seven to come back to do this trade shot, and then they're going to go on at nine. Right, right. And so half of what I do has nothing to do with me knowing it. I know it. Half of it has to do with the um, the way I am coming across to the people I'm photographing. Right, right. They because I am not sitting there and looking down. There's nothing worse to me than when you're taking a photograph of someone and the photographer is doing this the whole time. Oh boy, yeah. And that's the that's the one thing I noticed that Joe never ever did. Mm-hmm. He always kept eye contact. He always talked to the people he was photographing. He had a connection to him. So I am trying very hard to get a connection going with some very famous people who have their photographs taken all the time. If I suddenly check out and I'm starting to look at my camera, they're not going to pay attention to me at all. Right. Um, this was probably the hardest shot I ever took. Oh, <laughs> that's that's Alicia Keys, um, an oh, unbelievable boy. performer, but she doesn't speak before the show at all. She drinks hot tea with honey and she does her, her meet and greets and the trade shot and everything else without actually talking to anyone because she's saving her voice. Right. Trying to I, save her cords. I get it. I understand it. It's awesome. It's also really disconcerting. <laughs> <laughs> you got, got a great smile and feedback, but there was no talking. Um, um, maybe the weirdest just, shot that I took, um, that's Justin Bieber in the middle on one of the first tours. So this is this is back in 2013, um, and as you can see, suddenly we had a lot more people. So now I'm I'm stepping back, I'm increasing the power of the flash, um, but I know this just from okay, I'm, I've got to step back four feet, five feet from where I'm usually taking a shot. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm going to increase this stuff, and this is not what people don't get. This is not magic. This you can literally practice in your house all the right. time, and especially now that we don't have a whole lot to do. Uh, out there because we don't have any shows right now. Um, this is what I, in my head, I go through these scenarios and I practice with my camera. My dogs become my my um, subjects. You know, Boy, mine yeah. have mine have been my subjects here lately too. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it's because it's, I just can't go out and randomly uh, take photos of people out in public because it's just mm, not so safe. You know, right? So my dogs have been pretty much the highlight here recently i gotten a couple cameras in to demo for work and i'm like oh man people are really going to get tired of seeing kylo and biscuit (laughs) (laughs) well a lot of times i uh you know i I take hundreds and hundreds of photographs no one ever sees which is probably a really good thing (laughs) because if you saw them all you'd be like why is he on a show with photo tips um the the other part of it that is is um is kind of key is that when you're around, you know, Taylor Swift, probably one of the biggest artists in the world. This is back in, uh, I think 2013. Mm-hmm. Um, it didn't put the date on the poster for me. It, it, sometimes it's really unnerving and, um, you know, you, things don't go well. Uh, mm-hmm. once in a while I get to take a shot and a test shot. Like if we can get them taking a picture of the poster beforehand, then I'm, I can check my lighting <laughs> really mm-hmm. fast without it, mm-hmm. without it mattering. Um, and we do the the regular shot. I'm gonna. That's not always the case, though. No, I'm gonna, uh, and I have one in here, and I'm gonna I'm gonna bring it up because it's um something where things went horribly wrong. It's it's really I appreciate you showing when something so, goes wrong because a lot of people, you know, they see your name out and about all over the the, the internet with these amazing photographs, and people will assume that you didn't screw up somewhere. When the reality is, we all have those moments. <laughs> so, so this is a screw up, and it's one of those ones where I, I stopped paying attention, and it, uh-huh. it cost me a big time. So, this is Andrea Bocelli. He's blind. Um, he's a fantastic opera singer. He doesn't care what I'm doing because he can't see me. Mm-hmm. We created a poster for him that they made spe- that had specially printed that was printed like Braille, so it actually had raised. Um, they figured out how to overlay printing and continually overlaying it so that he could actually feel the printing on the poster. That's beautiful. So he is getting to actually see with his fingers the poster. Mm-hmm. The problem is um, that it's out of focus. Yeah. 
Yeah. And so when we had him touching the poster uh, and that's in focus, everything was really good. And I got, I was so uh, excited and nervous because it was a big group that when I actually took the shot of him with the poster, it's not sharp. Yeah. Yeah. And um, so Dang. I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, it happens. Uh, and, and this was, this was one of those things. And I'm, I, I will fully admit to this. This was one of the first shoots I ever did with the D850. Mm -hmm. and I lost track of where I put the focus point. Okay. Yeah. Um, my goal is to always put it on the artist's face and everyone else, you know, good luck. <laughs> right. Cause, right. Cause they're, is, well, well, the artist is the focus. You know? That's it. And, um, on this one, I drifted the focus point onto the mirror behind the artist between the artist and the general manager of the building. And I shot, two frames and that was all I had. And it turned out that both of them, um, were out of focus. So, uh, <laughs> lesson learned. Um, <laughs> I, I now, uh, one thing I do is I, I realize that my cameras have a group focus button. So I made sure that when I'm doing these things, I have a bigger focus point directly over what I need to make sure is in focus. I practiced, uh, keeping track of the focus from then on. I, curse myself on a regular basis when that picture pops up, but it could have been fixed. It could have been solved. Had I practiced earlier, had I right. realized that the D 50 has the D eight fifty has a lot more focus points and it was a lot easier to nudge one of them. Just, to, just a nudge. I just, I just smidged it off to the right. And it was like, just barely, just barely. And it was enough. That camera is really responsive. <laughs> Like, yeah, it's really responsive. It was so responsive. It focused on the mirror behind them. Now, um, I, have, I have a question for you. After okay. you, after you got that photograph and saw that it was out of focus and not necessarily the desired results, did you put your camera away and say, screw this, I'm done? Oh yeah, that's exactly. No, I, <laughs> I, went out, I went out and shot the rest of the show. I didn't even know I'd messed up till I got home. Mm -hmm. Um, then I had to have a really awkward conversation, um, with my boss. I had to explain to them that, um, there are times where things happen and, um, you know, uh, it was my fault and I'm sorry, but we did not have a decent trade shot. I, I did every single trick that I knew of in Photoshop to, increase the focus to, to try to change it a little bit, to sharpen up areas to de and it, and it, it got, it was fine for a web, you know, for Instagram, it, it, no one noticed cause it's a tiny little, you know, 1200 by 1200 pixels. And it's a little blurry and everyone was like, they're looking at on its phones. Right. But, um, these are pictures that sometimes go to billboard magazine. They sometimes get printed. They want to have them large. They want to show them off to the people. And, um, so it was a humbling experience. And what it did was make me make sure that the next time Andre Bocelli came to the venue, right. I made sure that that you could see it on the screen. This is the following, uh, two years later, he came back mm -hmm. we did a new poster for him again, uh, with Braille so that he could actually read it. And this is um, beautiful. And I made sure that this, <laughs> this photo was tack sharp, beautiful. Um, low key. You know. Oh, beautiful. And I just, yeah, I, I, I managed to do it a little bit more, not in the dressing room. I did it backstage against the wall. I, you know, put them about five or six feet away from it. I got the <laughs> background. I, I really worked hard on making sure that this one shot made up for the last shot and it never will because right. that was the first time. And this was not the first time, but, um, it was, it was one of those things that I just, I'm like, no, we, you know, you, we've, I've got to keep my focus where it needs to be. And I need to keep my focus on my photography where it needs to be. A screw up isn't going to cost me everything, especially if you admit to it and work on making it better the next time. I'm right. lucky enough that we've been able to, you know, been able to take another shot and, and, um, you know, uh, and, you know, honestly, after the first time, um, because of so many things that went horribly wrong for me at that concert, the next time he came back, we made sure I had actually had more access. Um, I shot the whole show from anywhere I wanted to inside the building. Oh. We, 
yeah, we, we really, it, it, the whole game got upped because of the screw up in the first time. So instead of making it a negative, it kind of ended up being a positive. That's awesome. Um, all right. Well, we're running a little bit long. I want to go ahead right, and we're good. let people tell, let, let, let you tell people where they can find more of the work that you're doing <laughs> and your musings and your gazillion books and all that good stuff. Uh, so the, the, the spot where I'm most active with photographs right now is probably Instagram. Um, I'll put a little, we'll put a little tag. It's Alan Hess and, and, uh, and Instagram. Um, I'm alanhessphotography.com, but uh, I'm going to, the disclaimer is my website has been on the back burner for over a year because um, COVID <laughs> and <laughs> and a few other things. So the truth uh, comes out folks. <laughs> it, it's, it's, there's a, there's a new one coming. There's, there's a whole bunch of new stuff that needs to be updated and coming in and I didn't want to piecemeal it out. So I'm, I just kind of hit the pause button like most of the world did and and are coming out. Um, I also do a podcast with my buddy, Dave Clayton, who's a designer. It's called uh, he shoots. (laughs) Yeah. He shoots, he draws. I'm the, he shoots part. Um, Dave's the, he draws part. So that's he shoots, he draws.com. So, um, we're, we're trying to put out, Oh, I don't know. Three, three episodes, I guess, episodes of a podcast, three, (laughs) three discussions, three chats a month, three to four. Um, you know, so we're, it's very loose. (laughs) It's kind of fun. It's, there's nothing, you know, nothing too serious about it. It's definitely Um, one of my favorite listens each week. Yeah. Love it. We, we have a good, we have a good time doing it and I hope that comes across, you know, it's just a chat and, um, so that's really it. Um, and if anyone has any questions, I'm, you can literally email me. It's Alan at Alan Hess photography.com. Uh, I've always taken questions from anything that anyone wants to ask me. Um, yeah, he actually answered mine. <laughs> <laughs> if that uh, look at the trouble that got me into, no, um, <laughs> you, know, I, you know, it's, it's been a, it, it's crazy. Cause you look at, I look at history books and I look at things that happened in the past and you're like, wow, it must've been really crazy to live back then. And then I look around right now and it's just really crazy to be going through what we're going through. And yes. You know, I know it's, I know we're waiting to come out on the other side kind of thing, but I'm also starting to just accept that it's going to be a little different going forward. Um, I yeah, we'll, shot we'll an, pull I, through. We'll pull and through. I photographed an opera in a parking lot. I mean, you know, it's a, <laughs> an opera in a parking lot was one of the, I, if someone would have told me that I was going to shoot an opera in a parking lot, I would have looked at them like they were crazy. And I mean, like, yeah, the people came to watch the opera in their cars and we had the stage in the parking lot and they watched the opera from their cars and the opera was socially distant because there was four or six performers and they all stayed. It was, it was you know, one of those unbelievable things. And I think we're going to do it again. So, <laughs> you know, um, we're going to keep, we're going to keep being artists. We're going to keep being yeah. creative artists, whether it's singing and photography, what have you, we're just going to keep creating. This is not yeah. going to stop us from creating. It's not. Nope. Um, I'm, you know, yeah, it's, it's, I will say it's been a tough year and I'm looking forward to being around a bunch of friends that I know again in a photo pit. There's people I haven't seen now in nearly a year and it's, it's, that's uh, tough, but Hey, we'll, you know, keep going. Music and, and performance and art are really important. If, if nothing else, this last year has taught us that when you're, when times are, t- are bad, man, like being able to put on that favorite record or being able to watch that live stream or just, you know, read that book has been life-saving. Yeah. So, you know, um, for me, I'm going to just keep creating stuff and maybe I'll even share some of it. (laughs) (laughs) I just, maybe just maybe. Well, my man, thank you so much for your time this week. This is, this has been an absolute joy and treat for me to be able to sit with you and and just listen to you share some of your thought process on this. And I hope you'll allow me to pick your brain in the future and have you on the show again soon. Good. Anytime. It's been great to catch up and uh, we'll get you back on. He shoots you to us too. Thank you, my man. Thank you. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you. All right, folks, that is it. That's going to do it for this week's episode of hands on photography, man. That was just, mm. Ooh, that's some good knowledge dropped on us right there, folks. So again, the main key is get your practice on. You don't necessarily have to, to be out and about at a studio or what have you to get practice in. You can practice at home in your, in your own, bedroom or kitchen, dining room, whatever. Practice at home. Pick up your camera, 
put in the work. And if you have questions about the exposure triangle, I went over that pretty thoroughly on episode two and episode three of hands on photography with some visual aids to help you out, to help you get a better understanding of that, that fundamental uh, photography. All right. If you have any other questions, feel free to shoot me a message over on um, in, with email at hop at twit.tv. Or you can just tag me on Twitter and Instagram. On Twitter, I'm ant underscore Pruitt. On Instagram, I'm ant underscore Pruitt as well. Thank you all so much for the tremendous support. Thank you to my man, Mr. Victor, who's editing these shows and making me look and sound good, even though I may screw up here and there. I love you, brother. Thank you so much. And we'll see you all next time here on Hands On Photography. So safely create and dominate. Y'all take care. Hey, folks, thanks for tuning in to another show here on the Twit Network. If you are a fan of home automation, Internet of Things, and all things smart technology, you should check out my podcast, Smart Tech Today. I do it with Matthew Casanelli, and we have so much fun talking about all the latest news for all things smart tech. 